Greensboro, Mr. Jim Engster. Thank you, Bud, and we're continuing with our theme of dentists. Last week it was <laughs> Billy Cannon, and next week it's Brad Davis, and we have uh, Matt Mock, and, and Bud Johnson noted that in the great history of LSU quarterbacks, and there have been a few good ones here, Matt and Warren Rabb, who both led their teams to national championships, have the best record as starters, 18 and 2. And uh, I went to LSU, but I know that's 90 percent, so that's pretty good. Um, he, he was number 18, and in 2003, as you can see, it was a magical season. One loss to Florida, and then seven straight wins in the national championship. And when LSU won the BCS title on the 4th of January, 2004, it had been 45 years since the Tigers had won a national championship in football. And this man was largely responsible. That season he threw for 28 touchdowns. And he came to LSU in an unusual way. He had played professional baseball for three years and actually had been recruited in Indiana out of high school by a coach at Michigan State named Nick Saban. And when Matt's baseball career ended, he was once again courted by Coach Saban and brought him to LSU. And the rest is history. And uh, ten years ago, he was hurt, but uh, I guess you were on the field for the Bluegrass Miracle when LSU uh, beat Kentucky. And uh, we'll hear a little bit about the 2002 season as well, I'm sure. But Matt Mock had a great stay here, and he played four years in the NFL after he left LSU, and he is now a dentist. He's a man of many talents. He's done a lot in his life at the age of 33, and we're pleased that you're here, and we're pleased to have Matt Mock as our speaker all right. Well, thanks so much. I can't tell you, you know, as you said, I live in, uh, in Denver, Colorado now. And I uh, cherish any opportunity <coughs> I get to come back to Louisiana. I um, want to say thanks to, to Bud. Um, he and I have been trying to put this together for about two years now. And uh, mainly because of me, it hasn't worked out. Uh, but I'm glad it finally did. You know, when it... When he told me I was going to talk, I said, well, you know, what, what do you want me to speak about? And uh, he said, whatever you want. And I said, had to give him a little bit of a hard time. I said, thanks for the direction. You know, <laughs> but, uh, but I think it gave me a unique, unique opportunity. You know, I hear all the time, uh, even tonight, people say, you know, thanks so much for, you know, the memories and, and the time that you were here. Uh, but as players, we get very few opportunities to say thank you uh, to the fans. Um, and the great memories that, uh, that you were able to help provide for, for me and the, the number of players that have been through here. Um, you know, I, I say this all the time that um, college football is a big business. And, uh, and there's the facilities, you know, the, this museum. Uh, today I was over at the, the, um, the football facilities, and it's beautiful. I mean, it's, it's just unbelievable. The academic center, all those things that we have. Um, but every school has that now. Um, every SEC school, USC, Ohio State, Michigan, they all have that. Um, but what I think separates um, all those schools from LSU um, is, is the fans um, and what they're able to do uh, and how special the, they're able to make it um, for the players. Uh, this weekend is kind of neat for me. Um, I, I bring my six-year-old son. Uh, to his first ever uh, LSU game. So um, it reminded me uh, of how exciting it was um, for me to be here. Um, you know, I told him that we're, we're coming in, and um, last night we got to go see him put the stickers on the helmets and, and do all that. He got to go play in the indoor facility. I told him we were going to go onto the field um, during game day. I think he, he even gets to come out for the coin toss. And, you know, pretty much every little kid's dream. Uh, and he looks at me and you know, he's really excited and he said, yeah, that's great. He said, uh, he said, do you think I'm going to get to feed the tiger though? <laughs> so, I said, I think you're being a little greedy, all right? Uh, just, just be appreciative of what we we'll get to do. Um, but you know, I think, um, you know, as he alluded to, to my background, um, you know, I was uh, recruited uh, to Michigan State by that the former coach, I won't even say his name. <laughs> but, uh, you know, to play uh, football and baseball, and then I went into the Cubs organization and played for three and a half years. Um, so when I got to LSU, I was a little bit older, um, but I think they gave me a unique perspective um, on things and helped me to appreciate um, things a little bit more. Um, 
while I was here. And I think the one thing um, that I'm most proud of um, is what the program was like. Uh, I was speaking to someone earlier, um, uh, I think it was Barry, about uh, those Curly Holman years and Donardo years when things weren't so great. Um, and when I got here um, with that former coach, things weren't good. Uh, the players that we had here um, weren't, um, uh, I guess, didn't represent, I think, what the fans wanted uh, to be as an LSU player. Um, and so to see that transformation, um, and it not only was it because we got the right coach and the right players, uh, but also because uh, the fans were willing to embrace that. Um, and you know, came out and support, um, came out and, and donated uh, to things. And we, the reason that we were able to have such beautiful facilities, um, and came out. To, you know, I remember kind of the the point where I felt like um, the program had kind of turned around um, was in 2003. Uh, we were playing Georgia, and it was the first time. And game day was here, and it had been I can't tell you how long until game day had been on the campus, and. We were ranked, I think, in the top six, and so was Georgia. And my favorite part, uh, one of my favorite parts uh, of, of playing here was the Tiger Walk, where the bus drops you off and you come down. And it was always good, you know, and enough people to kind of line the whole thing and you walk down. But I remember that Georgia game, we, the bus pulls up and you get off, and literally you could not see the ground. Uh, there was that many people. Um, I think they had estimated like 250,000 people uh, in the stadium and then outside. Um, and, and then to be able to win that game, uh, the last second uh, touchdown, um, I, I think really allowed the players and the fans to, to realize that LSU um, was back and, uh, and where it should be. And luckily, um, you know, through the efforts of the, the, the people that are here and through the efforts of the fans, uh, it has stayed that way. Um, and something that I'm extremely proud of to have been uh, the part of kind of building that uh, to where it is today. Um, you know, I, I get this question a lot with, uh, with concussions and things like that. People always ask me, so, you know, I have two young boys, a six-year-old and a two-year-old. And they said, you know, they always ask, oh, would you want your kids to play football? And, uh, and I said, without a doubt. I said, uh, not only because of what um, I think football brings out in you as a person, um, it kind of makes you um, test yourself. Uh, to see, you know, if, if you're willing to kind of go that extra mile. Uh, it's kind of a scary thing. Uh, I, I'm a pretty big guy, but I'm not that big. Uh, and to have a 300-pound uh, guy running at you and then landing on top of you is not always the funnest thing in the world. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so, you know, it gives you the courage to go out and do that. But I think more than anything, um, playing football, and who knows if they'll ever be able to play at this level, um, but just the opportunity to maybe be able to do that. Um, and, and to get a chance to um, live some of those uh, dreams that you have, uh, I hope they, they get that opportunity. Um, you know, for me, uh, football and, and being here at LSU has provided so many opportunities um, in my life. Um, <coughs> I remember when I was applying for uh, dental schools, uh, I'd only applied uh, to LSU coming out because I knew I was going to go to the NFL. And then I applied to Colorado and Washington went in on my interviews and all they talked about was LSU football <laughs> the whole entire time. I said, I, I don't know if I'm competent enough to be here, but I know that they like football. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, but I think that it does that throughout life. Um, and I tried to, you know, I actually had uh, lunch today with um, uh, Zach Benberger and he and I, I was telling him just about um, to cherish every moment while he's here. Um, because uh, what you don't realize is when you get done, um, the network that you have uh, that's in place. Uh, and it's because, of, like I said, the fans. Um, and they're able to provide that. You know, I live in Denver now, and last weekend I went and watched the game with 300 people. <laughs> and they were, uh, they were there, and it was it almost felt like you were in Tiger Stadium. Uh, they were that excited um, and that passionate about it. Um, so I think it was just, for me today, tonight, was just an opportunity to say thanks. I know this is a small um, group of people to be able to say that to, but um, I think uh, the fans don't realize how important and how special they make it for the players. Uh, and I think it's what makes LSU unique uh, compared to any other place. Um, I've had the opportunities to <coughs> go to other schools and, uh, and to visit other places, uh, and even in the NFL. 
uh, people ask me that, they're like, oh man, I bet it was great to be in the NFL. And it was nice, but nothing compared uh, to being at LSU. Um, and so I just want to say thank you um, for allowing me that opportunity. And uh, you know, luckily we were able to have a little bit of success um, while I was here. And uh, it's great to see that that success uh, is continuing today. So um, I was going to open it up for any uh, questions that anybody might have. But feel free to ask anything you want. Uh, hopefully I'll <coughs> answer for you. Uh, kind of what you think. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think um, uh, I, I like where LSU's at now. I mean, I think uh, Coach Miles uh, is a good balance of that to where um, he's recruiting the right people. Uh, the program's in a, in a, a good uh, a good place, um, and uh, you know, look at the success he's had while he's here. Um, you know, I think Coach Saban. Was oops, I said his name. Was what LSU needed at the time. Uh, LSU was in uh, kind of a bad place uh, when I got here, uh, and we needed someone like that uh, to come in and kind of just change everything, uh, change the culture, uh, remind people that uh, you know. I remember uh, Pete Jenkins was a coach here. He coached in the SEC for a long time in a bunch of places, and he said that he said, "I can't." believe LSU was bad. He said, he goes, we come into LSU to Louisiana and, and recruit all these players. He said, if they just would get the best players in the state, they'd be what we are now. Because we do that. You know, we get those great players. And, and that previous coach was able to um, to start that that uh, cycle of getting players to come here. And uh, we've continued that. So, But he is a good coach. <laughs> you comment on having lunch with Zach Mettenberger, mm -hmm. and uh, what, what I'd like for you to comment on is, from your experience, the transition in the SEC or yeah. the evolution. Um, I'm probably the minority, but I, I really think that the expectations on him were way too high yeah. early, early on, and, and yeah. last week we kind of saw what we're hoping to see, but it yeah. but took a while. Yeah, you know, I tell that to anybody. I mean, I think um, playing in the SEC, um, not only I mean, after playing in the NFL, the SEC is the closest thing to the NFL uh, because the line of scrimmage is the defensive linemen are just as good uh, usually as they are in the NFL. So the game gets played faster. Um, and so for a person to come in and have success immediately uh, is very, very tough. And I think you're just seeing Zach kind of blossom into that uh, position. But it takes a while. I mean, it's, uh, I, I think, I, I remember I was at a, a Broncos game and I was sitting with a, a guy and he was asking me about all the coverages and the things and I was going through it and, and he's a dentist as well. And he said, wow, he goes, I had no idea that you had to think and had to go through that many things. So I think, and I, myself, I mean, now that I'm sitting in the stands sometimes, I'm like, God, the guy's wide open. How didn't you see that? <laughs> I got to do it recently because you couldn't see that. <laughs> um, and a lot of times you're not even looking to that side. It's totally different. So I think um, it's hard to be patient sometimes. Um, but I think if, uh, if we can give him a little opportunity, I think, you know, I told him that today. I said, I think, uh, you know, the remainder of this year and next year, um, it's going to be a really uh, great time for LSU. You were recruited by the uh, former coach yeah. of Michigan State. Uh -huh. um, where, where are you originally from? Up uh, there or? Originally from uh, Indiana, southern Indiana. So, yeah, I, I got recruited there. And then, you know, it was funny when I decided to play baseball, uh, all the guys I played with in the minor leagues, the guys who had played um, college baseball, they found out that I'd, I would have had an opportunity to play Division One football. And they all said, are you crazy? They're like, why are you here? They said uh, – <laughs> They said being to play quarterback at uh, in Division One football at a big time school, they were like, "That's the greatest thing ever." And I found out that they were right. It is. <laughs> Skip Burtman never called. Uh, no, <laughs> no, no. Uh, Shame on Skip. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, yeah. You know, I grew up in Indiana thinking that Big Ten football was the the greatest. You know, and uh, little did I know. Uh, you know, I tell people that all the time. I said. Uh, SEC and especially LSU uh, 
I mean, it's not even close. Uh, it really isn't. And it's because of the fans. I mean, it really is. I mean, they have the same facilities. They have all that same stuff. But it's the environment that, uh, that we create here is what makes it so special. So. So what do you recall? Yeah. Oh, sorry. What do you recall about the, uh, the bluegrass miracle? Uh, actually, I was uh, I'd gotten hurt uh, against Florida uh, that year, uh, tore some mm -hmm. ligaments in my foot. So I was actually um, at my uh, apartment uh, watching it on TV with my foot yeah. elevated uh, at the time. Uh, and I, I did actually not listen to the doctor and kind of stood up and uh, <laughs> kind of excited uh, for that. But uh, you know, just I think uh, every player will tell you it's kind of funny from a player's perspective. You know, as great as that play was. We all look at it like we should have been in that opportunity. You know, they sh we shouldn't even have to be in that situation uh, because mm -hmm. we played so poorly in the second half. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, just an amazing play um, and uh, and such. A, I think the, my favorite part of that was seeing the other coach get the ice. Dumped <laughs> <on>. <laughs> uh, but yeah, definitely a special place in LSU history. Yeah. I just wanted to thank you. Uh -huh. We were living in Atlanta oh, yeah. at a time when. Football was really bad here, and we had an alumni group, and we always went to some bar and had a viewing party. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was just what we did. And it got so bad that we had people, the bar people, asking us if we would leave because they had another group who wanted that bar because they had more people. So that's what we were going through at that time, and I cannot tell you what you all did for that yeah. because mm -hmm. it was just amazing. People were coming to us saying, would you all please have your your viewings yeah. of that bar. Yeah. It was exciting to watch. Yeah. No, yeah, I think that's just like in Denver now. I mean, it's uh, to have 250, 300 people mm -hmm. show up to watch a game is, uh, is pretty uh, pretty exciting. So, but thanks. I'm sure the bar owner wants to thank me too. Oh, he's happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else, anybody? All right. Well, good. Well, thanks for allowing me to come out. And, uh, thanks for